PEMDAS intro. Let's go ahead and jump right into Microsoft Excel. Once again, if you don't know how to get into Excel, we can just hit start, type in Excel down here. It will pop up as the program that you can open. This is what our screen should look like. We are going to be starting in the green section of our book, chapter one. <coughs> and today we're going to learn how to make an, an embedded, uh, or excuse me, a spreadsheet with an embedded uh, chart. Okay, so it's just some basics. Also, just so you know, I would say the worst part of Excel is the mere fact that we cannot have a 10 key on our keyboards. So if you're like me, buy a $4 10 key from Amazon. That makes you brilliant. Otherwise, you're just peasants. No. <laughs> minions. Minions, exactly. I love that. I call my employees minions every once in a while. It, it is. It's tough. So let's go ahead and start. I want to first start by explaining this. Right here, this is a cell. Okay, And a cell is kind of like Battleship. We're going to use the A columns for everything vertical, that's going to be a column. And then rows are going to be numbers for everything horizontal. And so if I say A12, I'll come down here and I'm referring to this cell. If I say H6, I'm going to come over to H and 6 and I'm going to be referring to that cell. What would you say? Yeah, you sunk my Battleship, exactly. Did anybody see Battleship, the movie with Rihanna? Yeah, I saw it. And that, that whole point when they actually brought Battleship in, they're like, send it to F9, fire! You know, they're like, oh, come on, really? Is that how you're going to bring the game into the stupid movie? Anyway, it was a good movie. Wait, Kind of. Except, didn't, yeah, didn't you see Rihanna? Rihanna's part was this. She got a Razzie award for it. Every time, it's just her and her hat. Looking up, and there was like water dripping down. I'm like, does she talk ever? You know, so. <laughs> okay, we're not going to rip on Rihanna. We're just recording and Excel. I just thought it was funny. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Now, the cool part about Excel is that each one of these cells is kind of like its own Word document. We can type in a ton of information here. So I can put, this is an awesome calculation program. And notice that I've done that. Now, it's spilled over. I have cells A through D filled. But if I come over to B... And I type in, hello, Jen. Uh-oh, it's just deleted everything, right? No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It's actually there, but just because it's limited in the way it can display, if we come back up into cell A1, we can see this is actually what's still in that cell. So everything is still there, we just can't see it. Okay? Come over here, everything's in here. And so we're not cutting anything off, we're just limited to what we can see and what we can't. There's a, other, a few other little fun things I want to show you about Excel. First off, they've tried to make it. They've been working on Microsoft Excel since I think the mid 80s. So they've tried to make it fairly user friendly and it guesses at certain things. So if I do a one, two, three and I highlight these things and we'll learn how to do all this. I'm just showing you and I drag this down. Notice that it started, it said, hey, he's trying to do a series of numbers. Let me help him out, I'll fill it in. So as I pulled it down, it actually started guessing. I can actually do repeats the kind of the same way where if I started up at the top here and I did uh, A, B, C, I think it's going to repeat here. Yeah, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Notice it, it guesses and it spread those things out. So we just need to go into it understanding. Why you go A, B, C, D, why you go like um, well, because it's a letter, it's a little bit different. It'll do that in a numeric way, but we could actually set up a pattern too. We can tell it to do things, but I'm just saying by default, it does by certain little things. Right. If you were to do three, six, nine, but would it go 12? You know what? I think it will do a series. So watch. We go three, six, nine. Yep. Oh, that's tough. Goes in series. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so it's a math program. Uh, it's a math program. It's trying to figure out mathematically what it, what we want it to do. Okay. So that's that's good to know. And just realize that the beauty of Excel is that if we can theorize, if we can come up with the principle how we want to set our formulas up, we don't ever have to do another math problem in this thing. And I love that. That's something that makes me thrilled as a business person is that as long as I can conceptualize with PEMDAS, as long as I can conceptualize what do I want this to be calculating, it will do all the hard work and do all those calculations for us automatically. I love it. Okay. So just keep that in mind. I also like to tell everybody right off the bat that building a spreadsheet is kind of like art. Good hiccup. 
and in the way in, in such a way as that no two spreadsheets ever have to be the same right there's no particular way that I would say has to be done and I'm gonna teach you some tools that are basic general spreadsheets but there are crazy spreadsheets that are huge there's multiple worksheet spreadsheets there's more you know that all encompass a huge amount of worksheets in one workbook but we're gonna be doing some rather basic ones and in our book I love the way it frames our problem because it says your boss comes to you with this page it's on page four of what they would like done and they give you this little typed out thing like this is how she would approach you and this is what she's requesting let me tell you in my life I have made quite a few spreadsheets for my bosses <laughs> okay they have never come to me with a formal request like this because if they did they would have made the spreadsheet themselves typically your boss comes in and says hey put together some numbers I want to know which towns are collecting how much money from all of our different various activities which is what this would be I need it on my desk in two hours can you get it done that's how you're gonna get presented the information it's not gonna be like give me five columns distinguishing each town that's not how they do this so we always have a lot of latitude when we develop a spreadsheet because of that latitude we want to develop good techniques to make clean I would say clean spreadsheets that are useful to people that's very important with Excel it's a powerful tool but it doesn't have any power if it looks like crap and if we can't understand what's on it it's just another confusing piece of paperwork so we're gonna go through this this is a really good example and I'll give you some hints as we go through I love chapter two because I bring in some stuff that's not even in the workbook on how we use it in real life because they have some stuff that they kind of give us as a school book textbook example but I'm like no in real life we would change that so we're gonna get to that tomorrow but we would start right here our basic premise I and I'm gonna preface this with whenever I build a spreadsheet in real life I always start on one worksheet and I build a real rough horrible version of it and then I start another sheet after I know kind of how it's gonna be formulated in my head because a lot of times it's organic it's growing you're thinking oh I should have put this here and I need to put that here but we kind of have a good direction so we're gonna follow it and we're gonna start with our title normally I don't start with my title I normally start typing in figures and figuring out how I'm gonna do it but we're gonna go ahead and start and we're gonna say we're gonna save the sable and we're on page uh, eight right now so save the sable river foundation in the green section yeah we're on page 8 in the green section the Excel section and we go ahead and hit enter and that will take us down to the next cell which is a2 and we're gonna learn all about navigating and all this wonderful stuff as we go through uh, then we want to put our subheading which is the what is this this is the lifetime fundraising summary enter and now our wonderful boss had given us what columns they would like us to have anyway so we're gonna put in all the different names of the towns so if you look on page 11 there's a list of all the towns the first one's Allentown and I want to show you before anybody goes any farther if you guys can all look up here right here when I'm on Allentown before I go to my next cell if I hit tab just watch this I hit tab and I type in uh, what's the next one here Chamber City and then I hit tab, not enter. If I hit tab, not the right arrow, but the tab key. I'm going to type in one more here, Pattonsville. And then I hit enter. Notice what happened right there. It took me back to the first spot where I started typing. Now, if I was to do this and I hit the right arrow, right arrow, and then I hit enter, notice it just takes me down. It didn't take me all the way back. But if I come over here and I hit tab, tab, enter, it brings me back to the beginning. So I like to use a tab, especially when I'm doing data entry, because if you use tab, it takes you across, you hit enter, you don't have to go refine it, you don't have to take your hand off, go find the mouse and click on the cell. But this is a really good feature, so tab is an important one to remember. So tab will get us around here. So go ahead and type all these in. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Shame Burr. There we go, thank you. Save Sable Village, let's see here. Strongville. That's good. Yeah, oh my gosh, there are a lot of them in there. You're not going to be able to see them on mine either, so you better look at your book. But you want to get all the way over to H3, and you should have total in there when you get to H3. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see this better. I'm going to have to zoom out, but it's going to look a little different than what you guys have. And 
then once you get that, we're going to put the row, uh, the row heading. So we're going to put corporate over here. This is on page 12. This is weird. My other classroom, I can always put my book right here. I actually like to put my book right here and type when I'm doing stuff. So it's going to be a little different. What's it doing? It keeps doing under, <coughs> underlining, but it's not even on underlining. Don't even worry about it. We'll get back to it. We'll fix it in a minute. We're going to format everything. We're going to make it look pretty in a minute. Everybody got their titles? Because then we're going to want to go to B4, Bravo 4. Now you can see on page 13 of our textbook, there is a, a group of numbers. Now normally, if we, were to, if we were to be doing this on our own, we would have to go find these numbers. But luckily, we're in a textbook. They had handed these numbers to us. So what we'd like to do is start typing these numbers in. <clears throat> now if you're like me, and you were smart and you brought a 10 key, <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> so, then this becomes much faster if you know how to 10 key. But having spent many a summers as an accountant, started as a bookkeeper, I like a 10 key because it makes me a lot faster. So what we're going to do is it doesn't matter about any kind of commas or dollar signs. We're just going to put the numbers in here. okay? And I hit tab after that, just so you know. Notice that it rounded my number to a 4. I actually put 0 .35 and it rounded it to a 4. Don't freak out. The real number's there. If I go back, notice that up here, it has the real number. It's just been formatted to only give me one decimal place. So we're going to go ahead. Everybody type in everything on page 13. We want to make sure that our tables look just like that table. And let me just tell you, the numbers in this are kind of like colors in Word. We don't have to have a panic attack if we're not exactly the same because that probably means you typed in something wrong or I typed in something wrong, it's probably you. <laughs> but I've only done this one 5,000 times. Do actually have a number pad. It's all confusing though. You have to like do a weird function and then you can do it like a cockeyed number pad. Okay. It doesn't work very well. Unfortunately, we're not in my old room. If we were, I have a bunch of keyboards in there for the computer classes. And I tell everybody just grab one and plug it in if they want one. So is your setup too round? Yes, by default it should round, but if it does or it doesn't, don't panic. Don't worry, I'm not panicking. You're panicking. I can tell there's a panic in your eye. There's no panic. Remain calm. And this is my favorite part of this class, the quiet typing. Silence is wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Just any kind of normal spreadsheet that you could use in your life. I've had people calculate their paychecks. I've had people just say they're gonna have, you know, they make like a chore chart for their kids. You just need to use Excel for something in your life. You turn into the Excel extra credit folder. Word, it has a Word ex extra credit folder, which I only had one person take me up on the extra credit so far. I didn't feel like you said that. Well, I thought you were gonna put it online. Yeah, no, I didn't, I, didn't, I wanted to do it, but it's I online. No, it isn't. It won't let me touch it. Type in your table and we'll do it at the break. I'll show it to you. There's a Dropbox for it. How about that? There is a Dropbox for it. I hate this. What do you hate? It's, I wish I had a 10 key. Look. Well, you know, this is one of those things when life gives you a lemon, type it in. <laughs> Make some lemonade. Let's be happy and chipper about it. Gosh, I'm a positive guy. <laughs>
while you guys are typing, I'm going to jump up here. Ooh, Iron Man. Iron Man has new power. I told him not to tell him about that. Space suit. But can you fly? We can do a lot of things, but fly you can. APP 101. Let me just see here. If you go to... Yeah, that's hidden to students. I'm looking for under assignment. Isn't it under assignment? No. No. I looked for it. Well, it's pretty basic. Make a flyer for something in your life, anything in your life, that you would like to use Word for. Well, this Word Extra Credit is a Dropbox. I know that. Yes, you can still turn it in. You submit an assignment, there should be a word the extra credit. Yeah, it's in the Dropbox, but I just didn't know what it was. Submit, <laughs> submit assignment? Can you give me like I'm a booker? No, you just remind me a lot of my shipping lady, office manager. See it now. She is awesome. Oh, she's gotta be. It's like scary how much you remind me of her. <laughs> and she yells at me all the time, so. She has, she's the only person in my office allowed to yell at me. So I'm like, am I in trouble? That's what I was like, am I in trouble too? No, You're looking at her going, oh my God, what did I do? What did I not do this time? I'm sorry. I'll get it taken care of. Are we all getting close? <laughs> Here we go. So we've gotten all these done. We've done this. And now what we're going to do is do something useful with our numbers. I love this. When we start making numbers useful. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to B9. Hit. Bingo. No, <laughs> B9. All right. So we go down to B9 and one of the most automatic things that a lot of people do is they like to add things up in Excel. So they've given us this wonderful feature called auto sum and it's the sigma up here on the right. Whoa. So if we just click that. <laughs> is this a new thing? No. no. I didn't learn this Hold on one second. Let me hit Control Z. I'm in my. I, first off, you have to go to the cell that you want it to calculate. So I'm in B9 because I wanted to total everything up. I'm going to come up here to the right, top right. It says Sigma right here, Auto Sum. As I click it, notice that it highlights everything. Everything in that little barbershop squiggly line that's happening is what it says. I'm going to add all these things together by hitting Enter. Ta da! Did I have to do any math? No. It was. Beautiful. Now let me do it really slow for those of us who are having a problem. <laughs> Is that you, Gabby? <laughs> I'm going to start here with nothing in here. I want to make sure I'm not doing anything in here. And you're just going to click this auto sum button up here at the top right. Did it not work? I got it, but I just don't know how you got the whole little jiggly. It does it automatically. automatically. That's the whole beauty of it. Is that what it'll do is it will find. The wrong cell. Yeah, it'll find everything above automatically. So now if I come over here, I don't want you, nobody do this, I'm just going to show you. If I come over here and I hit the same thing, look, it grabs everything above. But I don't want you to do that. What we're going to do is once we make one formula, formulas in Excel are by default what we call a relative formula. Meaning, and then, sorry this isn't in the book, but it means wherever the cell is, is, or whatever the formula is, it's relative to where that cell is located. So if I have a cell in B9, and I move that formula to C9, it's going to shift the entire formula over to the right one cell. If I was to take something that's in B9 and move it down to B10, it would shift that formula down one cell. Does that make sense? So all the yeah. cells that it would use is going to move across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and at the bottom right of my little black highlight, uh, highlight bar here, active yeah, the active cell, Notice when I highlight over that, it changes to a different plus sign. I want to get that little darker plus sign, and if I click and hold, and as I drag to the right, it copies that all the way across. And it makes it relative, so it will change. So now notice in C9, it actually calculates from C4 to C8. 
And if I want to see what it's doing, I could just click up here in my formula bar and it will show me this is the thing that I'm, I'm dealing with in here. Okay? So did everybody see that? Anybody have a problem with it? Yeah? That's fine. <laughs> okay, we're going to go like this. If I just come down here and I click on the bottom right where that thing had just changed, I drag it across. I'm going to drag it all the way over to totals. You can't get it to go down? Can't get what to go down? Oh. That's all right. It takes a village to raise an Excel army. Oh, okay. Well, this is good. You know what we're going to do? We're going to pause right here.